Hi everyone, my name is Joseph Konsgen and welcome back to my studio. Today what I'm going to be working on is this painting right here that I've had on the easel for a couple weeks. It's a sleeping blue jay in an apple tree in the middle of the summer. Um, this has been a really fun painting to do and so what I want to show you today is the last part of this painting which is this apple that's just up in the top corner. So uh, I'm going to show you some of the colors that I mix and the process that I go about it and it will be a longer video because I'm going to do this all in real time. I might cut a few things down just to keep it a bit shorter. So in an effort to keep it shorter, uh, I'm just going to dive right in and show you what I do to start painting this apple. Okay, so now that I'm set up to paint, I just want to quickly show you um, the reference photo that I'm going to be working from uh, to paint this apple. And when you look at it, you can see that the apple is half red and half green and the green part is in shadow so I'm gonna start with that green part and do the red um, the first thing I'm gonna do is block in just the basic colors and that should give us uh, a good start um, for this apple so why don't I just show you I've already got my colors kind of uh, laid out for the green and I'm just gonna start mixing because that green that we see on that apple is like a is like sort of a, a darker kind of lime green. So I'm just mixing cadmium yellow light and cadmium yellow medium and a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. And that's gonna just kind of give us uh, a bit of a green color. And I'm gonna dull it with some raw umber and I'm gonna gray it out with some white and a bit of black. And that should give us kind of a decent um, place to start for more of like a lime green, kind of like a dull uh, lime lime green. And, and I know it might look a little bit messy right now in, in terms of the color, but that's okay because what I wanna do is, is really just um, put down some base. We can always uh, add more color and add more depth later. So uh, I'm just gonna get right into it here and, uh, and start start putting in some of this color. And so what I want to do here is really just get the shape sort of outlined. And you know what, now that that's on there, it just looks a bit too, too saturated. So I might just dull that down a tiny bit. There we go, a little bit more gray and it doesn't have to be perfect right now what I want to do is just really get um, just a bit of color down nothing nothing uh, nothing's really just defining just yet it, this is more just about getting some color down and the hardest part for this as I realized with some of the other apples is that um, the part where the red and the green come together you don't want to be mixing any sort of reds and greens together because that's going to make brown. And so it's just going to be a bit of overlapping, you know, these parts where, where what I'm going to do is just kind of dot in some of these, these parts where the, where it sort of changes from, from green, from green into red. So, okay. That's, that's a decent start at least for right now. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly mix up uh, some red and and uh, start blocking blocking some of those reds in. And it's going to be a pretty similar thing like what I did for for the green. Okay, so for the red, I've got cadmium red and cadmium red light, and I kind of want to make like a, a little mixture of that, and I don't want uh, a red that's going to be too harsh. I want something, you know, fairly, fairly dull, because what I want to do is I want to come back over top of the, the red with a more saturated, um, red color right now I'm, I'm almost kind of looking for like a like a rusty a rusty sort of color so that's that's what I'm working with here uh, this 
cadmium red and cadmium red light and then a little bit of raw umber and some black and white just to kind of like gray gray it down I might even add a touch of ultramarine blue just to kind of make it purple okay so now I'm just gonna go right in with the red And you can see how dull this is compared to um, some of the other apples that, I, that I've done on, on here already. And that's because what I did with those was I had gone over it again with a very bright red, just uh, straight cadmium red, um, almost like a glaze. And I'll show you that once we get a bit farther along um, into the painting. So right now, again, just blocking in all these colors. Really what I'm looking for is just to kind of get that shape. Um, we'll add highlights and shadows in a bit, and I might even have to go over. As I can see, my paint is uh, a little bit thin. And this is kind of the issue sometimes, I think, with acrylic is that, um, you know, depending on how you mix the color, it can go on pretty thin, and you may need to go back over it again with... with uh, with a second layer uh, of some of the colors that you've mixed because it does tend to be a little bit thin. So just multiple layers, but that's gonna work um, to my advantage later on um, when I'm putting on some of these glazes is that I can, I can put the color on extremely thin. So, okay. So while that's drying, uh, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to fill in that green again. And now that it's dried, it just looks a little bit too brown. So I might add a bit more of the blue just to give it that little bit more green color rather than something that's... that's uh, a little bit more brown and this is kind of the nature of how a lot of this stuff goes is that you paint something on first and you may go back and you say oh that's that's a little bit too it's a little bit too brown or it's a little bit too green or it doesn't have the right sort of the right sort of look to it Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna let this dry because I think it, it just needs to dry uh, really quick before I move on to the next step, which is gonna be, um, you know, transitioning the two colors together um, in a nice way. And this is where I'm gonna have um, some green paint, some wet green paint and some um, wet red paint to help sort of bring the two, the two colors together. And so, um, I think I'll just add a second layer of red here and then I'm going to let them dry and I will I will come right back. Okay, I'm back. I I let everything dry for, you know, maybe 5-6 minutes kind of thing and until the acrylic dried. It dries really quickly, which is really nice a nice aspect of it. So, the next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to try and bring the red and the green together and now I'm going to use a smaller brush it's like a zero I think and I'm just going to mix a, a slightly lighter color that's maybe a little bit more pink um, which is going to help sort of merge the two together and sort of give that nice transition from from uh, green to red so Just get the painting back up here. Okay, so now I'll take that color and I'm just gonna start kind of slowly, oh, I need a little bit less paint on there. 
Uh, I'm going to slowly start bringing the two the two colors together and kind of merging them and I might just you know sort of go on and as I continue adding a little bit more white um, here and there because I'm also gonna sort of use this color um, to start with that highlight that's around this part uh, right here so which kinda goes a little bit like this and that's gonna give that sort of rounded shape um, uh, to the apple so this part here is gonna be that highlight and then what I'll do now is just very slowly uh, bring in some of these colors down and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this pink color here um, to bring down uh, the apple like the red of the apple into it and then I'm gonna go back um, with the green and I'm gonna overlap and it's gonna create this nice um, overlap of color between the two and when I look at my reference picture um, I can see that the the red spots and kind of this really speckled color um, goes pretty far down into the apple and so there's a few spots kind of down in here just where that shadow is um, so I'm just gonna do that real quick make sure that there's good coverage and it doesn't have to be too pre precise because um, a lot of this is going to be cleaned up when I go back over it with some of the lighter highlights and so on. And now I'm just going to maybe go out to this outer edge and, and sort of follow that highlight. And the other thing I'm also going to do is that I don't have to follow the reference picture exactly. Um, if I see sort of a shape kind of coming out of here or if I kind of see that there's some contours that that look better um, you know then in, in regards to the color of the picture or if there's a leaf that I put in there that wasn't in the reference photo then I'll, I'll just kind of follow that that contour I'm not I'm not stuck um, exactly to uh, to that uh, that reference photo so okay I think that's pretty good. What I'm going to do, I think, before I, I come back with the green uh, and I just let this pink color dry a little bit, um, I'm going to uh, work on that green shadow. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some blue and some black to this green mixture that I made before um, for the apple. Not anything too dark um, because I want it to be a nice sort of smooth gradient. It doesn't have to be perfect because these apples are kind of, they have spots on them and they kind of have all these these different parts. So um, you'll notice that this color oh, might not have enough blue. I'm just going to add, I can show you. I'm just going to add a little bit more blue and so you can see the color that I mixed before which is still there. Um, I've just added a bit more blue and a tiny tiny bit of black um, uh, to that so that I can get that nice sort of shadow that's at the bottom and you'll see that even the shadow that's on the apple that's underneath this is really dark like this uh, part right here which is near black um, I will go back in and maybe darken some of those spots just ever so much um, to to match that shadow but for now I just want to build it up um, slowly by adding sort of this medium shadow color and that that's already gonna start to give it um, a bit of shape so I'll just slowly build that up and kind of take it along there and and the other thing is in my reference photo there was a leaf right here um, that was over top of the apple or sort of just on the side and so it's casting a shadow here but that's this one right here that I moved uh, behind it um, so I'm gonna leave that sort of open so only the shadow is gonna be down here it's kind of the best part of, of doing a painting is that if you see something that you don't like or that you think isn't gonna look good or you want it to be a little bit more prominent 
You can absolutely do that. So okay, that's good for a first pass on that shadow. You can see that it's still a little bit thin, but that's all right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, now that that pink has dried, um, I'm gonna grab uh, a bit, I'm gonna grab a bit of that green and lighten that up a tiny bit um, so I can bring some of that green back up into that pink and I'm just gonna I was just checking to see if that green color is the same yeah that looks pretty good because I kind of want the apples you know to all look at least moderately the same a little bit of variation is not bad it, it sort of makes it look really natural especially if the the apples are all slightly different colors, which is why it's kind of nice to paint them all separately. Then you get a little bit of that variation back and forth. So now you can see with this color here that I'm, I'm doing is I'm just bringing some of that color back in. And, and the reason I want to do it this way, I mentioned before, is that the if you mix green and red together, you get brown. And on the apple, that doesn't happen. It's very, very subtle, this kind of mixture of green and, and red um, together, where you actually have an actual green spot and an actual red spot. But, you know, sometimes if you want to blend those two together, the temptation might be to, um, you know, uh, put the two mix the two colors together to create that transition. But for this, that's not gonna look good because then your apple's gonna be mostly brown and we do not want that. So, okay. So now that that's done, my shadow color is not quite dry yet, but that's okay because I can go in and I'm gonna quickly do this little, um, this little center spot uh, right here. I'll just kind of fill that in a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And even what you're seeing on here, the even though the apple may look really, really big on the screen, it's actually it's actually pretty small. So if it's not exactly perfect, that's quite all right, you know. And I'm just going to add a bit of a a shadow on the inside here. Just going to go around and add this shadow and then I'm also noticing and I'm gonna wipe my brush off a little bit and just do like almost like a dry brush in in the inside of this sort of little spot there so now that looks like it's like it it, it sort of uh, indents in and I'm also noticing a little bit of that here. Okay, and I might just add something that I would, I'm kind of feeling like doing is just adding like some dark spots here just to make the apple look nice and natural. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm noticing that the green of my shadow is still drying just a tiny bit, so I'm actually gonna do the highlight now on the apple, which when I when I sample uh, or when I look at the color closely, it looks like it's just a light pink. So uh, I'm just going to grab some cadmium red and some white. I want this nice light pink color. And I might just dry brush a little bit of this like on the edges so that it it, uh, it blends in nicely. Okay. So that the spot with the brightest highlight is around this spot here, kind of where the the light 
is hitting it. And I find sometimes painting these um, these parts, like or things like this that are um, on an overcast day where your light is very soft and 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 kind of faded. I mean, it's it is one of my favorite lighting um, situations to to photograph in to, to get my reference material but when painting it it means that all your shadows tend to have a very soft quality to them so they blend into everything rather than harsh sunlight which tends to have very hard lines and hard shadows so I just want to blend this out as as best as possible maybe with just a little bit of dry brushing here and there maybe Maybe some of that where there's like a bump, you know, kind of in there. And then this has, this has like a, this has just like a little sort of edge on it here. There we go. Okay. going to go over this again because I don't think I got it quite enough here. And then the other thing that can sometimes look nice, but it's best to not overdo it, is uh, just sort of hit some of these spots with like an, uh, like an edge highlight. So, okay, how's that shadow doing? Okay, it looks... Shadow looks like it's dried, so I'm just going to go over it again and just deepen that so that it doesn't look sometimes it's good to just kind of bring in some of these colors just so you have a bit of a harmony all over the place. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just darken this blue a little bit, a little more ultra, ultramarine, a little bit more black, and maybe I'll go in there and just hit, you know, this spot down in here, just with a little bit more, a little bit more shadow. I might come back and darken that a little bit more um, because I don't and I don't want it to be too dark because there is some light uh, reflecting up from some of the leaves uh, like this one down here and some of these other ones that are kind of reflecting um, the light up so I don't want that shadow to be too dark Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab mostly white and just the tiniest, tiniest dab of, of red. Just the tiniest, the tiniest dab. I'm even just grabbing some from that previous color. And this is going to be my brightest highlight, which is just going to really just lightly accent this part. Oh, I've got a bit too much paint on there. I wanted to just kind of go on very, very dry brush. And I don't want to overdo this because I kind of want just these certain parts to, to stand out. Okay, that looks pretty good. I might just go in. Okay. And then just to make that top edge stand out, I'll just... that with the lightest line okay maybe okay that looks pretty good now the last thing the best part you'll notice that on some of the other apples is that the red is super super vibrant and the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to grab some cadmium red straight out of the tube and I'm going to to water it down very 
very light. So we're going to make almost like a, like a bit of a glaze. Just get that hair. So you can see I'm adding a ton of water. To this you can see how thin that is like it's almost like a like like ink and the acrylic is really nice for this it, it it waters down really nicely and especially if you're using a high quality acrylic it it works really nice so now what I want to do just very very gently is just come in and just add a bit of a glaze I'm gonna maybe do this a few times until I get the depth of red that I want but you can see how it just really brings out that color and I've often found that you know red is is an interesting color because it, it can be really vibrant but the moment you add any other colors to it it gets really really dull so you just wanna be the best way to to make something really really red and vibrant is to paint it how you would paint it and then come back and do a glaze over top uh, of of whatever you're doing and then that red will just really really pop I'm even gonna bring a little bit bit of it down in here not too much because I don't wanna I wanna keep that part mostly green but it just kinda helps bring the whole thing together So. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I might just, one last thing. Um, now that that has dried, that shadow could be a little bit darker, a little bit bluer. And maybe a bit closer to the, to the bottom edge. I'm just very, very lightly, very dry brush, just over top. Okay, I think that does it. That looks really good. I'm very happy. It looks very similar to the other apples, but it's got a little bit of a different flavor to it, so there's a bit of a variety. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna call this painting finished. Thank you so much for joining me in my studio today as I worked on this painting. I'm really happy with the way this turned out and uh, that last apple just seemed to bring the whole painting together and I was really, really happy with the way that turned out. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. If you made it all the way through the video, then I really appreciate it. That's great. If you have any questions about what I've done today uh, or if you want to know about some of the paints that I use or maybe if you want more in-depth uh, information about what I've done today then just leave them in the comments below I'll be happy to answer them and I will see you next time on my next painting video